We'd like to dedicate the first step of Apollo 17 to all those who made it possible. It's almost 50 years since the last time anyone walked on the moon. My golly, this time goes fast. America's Apollo program cost billions, but inspired millions. Retro. Go. Lido. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. When mankind took that one small step in 1969. One giant leap for mankind. Three, two, one. Now, lunar rockets are being rolled out to the launch pad once again. In a week, Artemis One will test the technology that aims to take us back. Oh, it's, it's amazing. I know that those missions happened in the 60s and the 70s, and I look up at the night sky, and it's still bewildering to me that we did that. And I'm so excited that we're, we're going back, and I think it's going to inspire a whole new generation. The US is currently the only country actively planning for a crewed mission, but it's not the only one with the moon in its sights. It seems like the whole world is trying to go to the moon. Just a couple of weeks ago, South Korea launched their very first mission to the moon. Um, India has already sent um, a couple of missions. China is very active. And Russia is planning to go to the moon. United Arab Emirates want to go to the moon. Japan uh, wants to go to the moon. So yeah, so there are loads of countries around the world. Everybody is trying to get to the moon as soon as possible. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a bit of an understatement to say lunar missions aren't easy. They're certainly not cheap. The US Artemis program will cost tens of billions of dollars. So why is this quite so popular once again? One clue is where almost all of the missions are trying to land. So the target location for most of the missions that are actually planning to land is near the South Pole region of the Moon. There is a potential that there is a huge amount of water ice that could be present there, and water is considered the key resource for a space exploration because you need water for supporting the um, astronauts at the lunar surface, for um, you know even potentially splitting the water into its components, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, to then use it as a rocket fuel. The potential of these resources is huge. There's planetary science to learn from revisiting the moon too, clues to the experience of the early solar system. But for politicians, who largely still fund all of this, there are perhaps more basic considerations at hand. Take national security. So at any time that you're sending something into space, you're sending it on a rocket. Um, anytime you're sending an orbiter into space, it's probably going to have a camera on it. What could they take pictures of, officials wonder? What else could that rocket lift? For the US, that's especially important when two years ago, China joined the club of countries successfully able to bring samples back from the moon. Uh, I think that it is uh, safe to say that in the United States, uh, China's uh, space ambitions, its um, whether it's in low Earth orbit or beyond, have not gone unnoticed. There are some, uh, some individuals that are uh, uh, very concerned about uh, China's space ambitions. I want you to see this photograph. Last year, NASA's administrator, Bill Nelson, pulled out a picture taken by China's Mars rover when he was talking to Congress. I think that's now adding a new element as to whether or not we want to get serious and get a lot of activity going in landing humans back on the surface of the moon. It's clear it wasn't just the promise of scientific discovery which got these latest missions to the launch pad, but the results of looking up from our pale blue dot will be the same, spectacular.